Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Wednesday. It is August 14th, 2024. I wasn't able to get a message going yesterday. I couldn't get to the table if I tried. I had a lot going on. So today, more than likely, you can look forward to two messages before the end of this day. The, the second one probably won't be until much later, but if I can help it, I'll see you two times. So, hope you're doing well. Hope the week is good for you so far. The weather is much kinder, at least where I am. Not so steamy and hot or stormy as it was. Actually, almost a little bit too mild. Not for my taste, but particularly if you wanted to go swimming or something, I might need a few more degrees hotter at the beach. <laughs> But nonetheless, I'm grateful that the sun is shining today. <clears throat> and I hope it is where you are, if not at least in your heart, where it matters most, right? All right, so let's see what we got today. Whoops. Wow. So first of all, this is where we were. <laughs> this was on the bottom, but this fell off on the floor and what has revealed itself is this devil card. Interesting. Ooh, okay. Interesting. So the... Hmm. So some, I feel like this is heavy to start, my God. But I feel like somebody pledged themselves to some type of dark agenda. I mean, honestly, kind of like pledged themselves to the, the devil's agenda. I say dark, but some type of demonic order is what somebody has either taken an offer for, an invitation for, but I sometimes, with pages, it's more so like a message or an offering. So I feel like if there is an exchange, the return is very small, which surprise, surprise, coming from a demonic entity, right? But it feels more like a pledge, like an like uh, a submission with the Page of Wands, like pledging their energy and their action toward whatever this agenda is. And then here's the Seven of Swords, which, you know, in the lowest vibration, <clears throat> often does have that kill, still destroy frequency. Where someone had an intention to get away with causing some type of infraction that between the seven and the six would be one. So that would either be the page of swords or the ace of swords. And this low frequency, well, that's interesting because it might be that they thought they were getting away with an ace of swords because the difference between the seven of swords and the six is one. That's where I'm getting that. But what they were actually getting away with was the page of swords, which in comparison is really, it's a stark difference. <clears throat> The page, it's like the difference between 
a, a, a little white lie and a big lie or a big illusion. That's the magnitude, the difference in the magnitude between those two. That maybe somebody thought that they pulled the wool over some, you know, they thought their lies were more effective. <clears throat> they made a bigger impact than, than perhaps what they actually did. And it's probably on account of what they were connected to and submitted to, which we know here, you know, this devil energy is like the master of illusions to pretty much hype you up to be on some, some bullshit and thinking that you're getting away with it or that you will, you know, when actually you may, you, you're more than likely going to be exposed, you know, even on account of what you may temporarily get away with, there's usually exposure on that other end, which is significant, again, between the page of swords, somebody that's like, maybe being a little sneaky, thinking they're being incognito, you know, a bit of a spy, or maybe even some you know, minion of sorts, you know, investigating the situation or just keeping close tabs, but also being a carrier of information as well with the Page of Swords. But again, it's, I guess the with it being the Page, it, it's like, it's, I don't, do you know what it is given that somebody thought that they were really spilling the tea, spreading some information around? Like I said, it was Ace of Swords impact, but it almost like the exposure um, comes into play because what, what it is that they may be sharing makes them actually look really small. Like either it's the information, the content that they're sharing, or the the um, lack of sensitivity in which they're delivering the information. Um, it could be the source of which it's like, well, why would you want to be the carrier of that? You know what I mean? It could even be, um, like I said, somebody thinking that they about to like spill the whole teacup and it's like, okay, and like, why would we want to know that type? Of, it's something about that here that whatever information someone is thinking that, you know, is about to transport them to some, I don't know, some advanced level or advanced access or influence. They think that whatever they have to share is about to make a real like hard hidden impact, perhaps on someone's character, whomever it is they're talking about. But it's like I said, it's like what the information that they're carrying really kind of reflects poorly upon them for multiple, multiple reasons and depending on their audience. So it's like somebody thinking that they come and telling a secret about you and they're telling it to some, to an audience that they think would want to hear it or think it's juicy or maybe even want to take that information and run. But instead of them being met with that energy, somebody is like, that's terrible. I, I, aren't you supposed to, like, aren't you cool with that person? Aren't you supposed to be their friend? Like, why are you telling that? Why? Why, or the, or they're not even believed. That's another part with it being the page of swords. Like I said, considering the source, that they don't it it that it's not even believable. Like what? Like that can't be true. I know I know that person better than that, or that doesn't make any sense. I just saw so and so da 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 da, or I've known that person since back in the day, and you know, like it's just not given what they thought it was going to give. It's not, and and hence why the six of the the six of um, swords is going in the opposite direction, because this is someone more or less kind of escaping, scathe from those lies, you know, kind of already on their way, maybe completely unbothered by it to some degree, but definitely avoiding the impact that was meant to have occurred you know, that was meant to make, you know, a deep mark or leave a mark and make an impression. 
they are already on their way to something else. Perhaps in, oh wow, look at this, and some commitment that is pure. And look at this, the death card. It was over before it even started. As soon as somebody concocted this scheme to do whatever it is that they were doing. With the page of wands is given that it didn't it didn't really it didn't really have the impact that was intended because the page of wands is is power but it's not a deep impact it's actually kind of a novice type of energy so it probably just reflected on someone's own insecurities and lack of maturity is what i would say Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, whomever it is that they meant to be um, an infraction on, like I said, is over here entertaining ideas that are on their level, you know, contracts and agreements that make sense, that are pure, that resonate on a higher frequency, that have value. So perhaps the intention was to, to ultimately um, cause an infraction to this possibility and potential here, like whatever it is, like I said, to match that Ace of Swords to this Ace of Cups, but the Ace of Swords really was just a page of swords. They thought they had all the, the information that would maybe keep these passengers from transporting to this reality here, which is far more promising, you know, in comparison, just on site. Oh, and look what I did. I pushed this up. Wow. And the lovers. Yeah, they wanted to put an end to this this connection evolving, whether it, it, in any way, shape or form, because this could be somebody tarnishing someone's character about a business deal, tarnishing their, their qualifications, their abilities, um, their reputation for a love connection, um, just defaming their character to, um, other friends that would impact connections in the present or the future. It could be so many different things that somebody thought that they were doing here, but whatever it was, didn't quite land. You know, it may have may have fallen on a couple of, of scandalous ears that, you know, were in the market for a little tea spill, but it, it had more of a like a more of a, a backfire against someone else's character like almost exposing their character for what they are than it actually did on the intended target or targets so that's that whatever that means so let's um let's reshuffle this deck and start from scratch because that was wow. Oh, Empress. Okay, starting off strong. Wow. Okay, I ain't even really shuffling yet, but all right, go off. <laughs> all right, so yeah, this is this is somebody hard at work. up to get more on the board but this is somebody like really dedicated to what they were really committed to something and maybe they came to like a, a hit a brick wall or a standstill if this is a matter of like a professional situation it could be competition at work where someone else um, 
wanted to seize an opportunity for advancement for themselves by pushing someone else down, by, you know, disqualifying their so-called competition. Um, or if whether or they could have been acting in in uh like impulsively re reacting on account of like jealousy or envy with that seven of swords, whether they were up for a promotion or some position or not, there may not have even been a competition, but maybe somebody just didn't want to see someone else or maybe even a woman if we're talking that primitively here with the empress um maybe someone didn't feel like a feminine energy would be would would be productive or you know would be i don't know what the word is like efficient i don't know like somebody basically challenging someone's again qualifications skill sets leadership ability um maybe their their experience perhaps their um intelligence whatever you know let's see what's on the bottom yeah and it, they they could have even felt like they were this feels like really the energy of the gossip actually of like trying to you know spread a narrative around to anybody that would listen but like juicing it up so that it is it thinking that it was interesting enough for people to kind of like ingest you know, to really receive and latch on to. It could, actually, I'm feeling something else here too. Like, and this pro, it's probably super specific, but it feels like a bribe with the Six of Pentacles. Like either somebody paying other people off to say disparaging things or kind of spread. It could either be someone breadcrumbing people information that they figure, you know, like scabs pretty much. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to a uh, spiritual savage that be calling people scabs. I think that's so funny sometimes. But I say that because they look a little bit needy, a little bit beat down, run down, like they might take anything for a come up, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it could be someone even targeting that level of low frequency that wouldn't, wouldn't be particularly um, bound to any moral obligation or, or standards to just take a story and run with it because, because they were asked to, either because they were asked to, bribed to, or just simply because they enjoy the sport of gossip and tea spilling, you know what I mean? Like literally, like no charge, just for fun. So it could be a number of things that some, it could be all of those outlets because Seven of Swords means that someone potentially went to some great lengths to spin a narrative, not just spin it in terms of the validity of it, but circulate it as well. And they may have kind of resourced all types of outlets to try to get as much information or as much um, make as, make as, make a great a great enough impact as they possibly could, so that if it's coming from enough sources by God, it must be true, right? If this one's saying this and that one's saying that, and you know, like if there's enough seeds planted in the rumor mill, then it would have to be believable, right? But I feel like, it feels like, and this is the point here, this Eight of Pentacles, like literally a rumor mill that somebody created to, to attack or reflect poorly on someone that's in a, in a position of power and authority at the Empress level. Someone that already has a great deal of influence, probably notoriety, admiration even if it's not professionally like the empress is well respected loved um revered 
uh, very attractive as well, beautiful as a matter of fact, like supreme Venus energy right there. So it's, yeah, which is the, the could be Taurus or, or Libra, like it's practical and grounding, relatable, but also something like, um, something like a uh, whimsical as well about that energy as well with the empress like almost untouchable to some degree but still relatable if that makes sense so yeah it's just somebody that was jealous and they did everything that they could to try to project um a, a narrative that would ultimately take the empress off her high horse or at least get other people to see her in a different light so that even like the empress is the empress you know that's um an appointed position of prominence so with your best effort you usually can't dethrone an empress because there's just a natural essence about that energy that earns its place you know so you may not be able to knock the empress off of her square but what you can absolutely do, again, is get other people to see something different. So that's the inner, the work of the Page of Swords and the Ace of Swords, where someone was really trying to change the narrative around someone's reputation in really harmful ways. But like I said, it was so low frequency that all that they could really get to bite were other low vibrational energies that in the grand scheme of things don't really hold a lot of weight because th you would consider the source coming from them as well. Like, oh, well, that's so-and-so. They love the gossip. You just got to take that with a grain of salt. Or, you know, people that got their own stuff going on that is kind of like, you talking shit about her? Like, are you for real? Like, we know what you went to type of energy. <laughs> like, where do you get off? type of vibe. And then again, the outlets that they may have sourced that may have been most credible, you know, that may have really held more weight to carry the story, probably didn't really receive it, let alone carry it on. Like they probably admonished it or, you know, it just didn't, connect to it in a way that would hold value for all this work that was put in. So here lies the point of stuckness at the hangman where somebody really is in the market for enlightenment because to spend so much energy on account of trying to make somebody else look bad, it's like you really need to, so you, you there's a complete like miss um miss misinvestment of of energy here somebody needs to pretty much like figure out <laughs> how how they can do better is the point cuz there's a this could be very <clears throat> prominent energy you know um premium energy anyway at the eight of pentacles invested in the right thing but in this frequency it feels like somebody took the mo the best of what they had to offer but um the pleasure on which they took from the work that they were doing it was it might have been gratifying for them but it wasn't really and it might have even been productive in the ways that was gratifying for them like somebody really just getting their rocks off on on um, on tarnishing someone's character, like that was the gratification. But in the end, it didn't really work toward their value. It didn't add money in their pocket that was lasting. Because here we are back at the six. It didn't really make them any smarter or wiser honestly if anything it, it reflected the opposite to those that matter about their character and it didn't advance them in any substantial way you know eight of pentacles is what you take when you take pride in your work it 
it um, is highly satisfac uh, satisfying. You would almost do it for free. And it's like somebody would have almost done this for free if they needed to. Um, although I have a sense that there was some value in it for them, but you can't give but you I mean you're only one person you can't give but so much of your energy out in 24 hours of a day and it feels like somebody lended most of their time toward a very unproductive agenda when they could have conserved that energy redirected it into something um that would have been empowering maybe even empowering to the position of the empress in another regard or the emperor or whatever leadership they were coveting, you know, or competing with. It's just it seems real weird. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. that on that and put that right up in the middle and let's go back on either side we're gonna get us a nice little pyramid today haven't done that in a while so it's the ace of swords yeah they poor investments they've spent a lot of money energy time resources ex expended a lot of their their own you know character currency to capitalize on this investment, <laughs> you know, like, and all they really got out of it was a measly pentacle. Now we've gone from the eight to the six to maybe somebody reinvested, you know, maybe they received a return in some regard, like things were kind of moving, like people may have been biting at one point in time or enough, an, Sometimes with energy such as this, like, it's gratifying just to have, just to be the author of confusion in terms of information and lies and illusions and things like that, where you, they may not even be so much invested in whether or not people actually believe it, but just the sheer fact that there's any contradictory information swirling around someone that would otherwise be completely void of it if, if it wasn't for them, right? Because the Empress, like I said, that's that reputation is is top tier in the, in the upright. But the fact that they could author so much confusion in truth, so much conflicting information is enough to kind of splash some, you know, some dirt onto someone to even have people thinking about it, like contemplating like, well, it could be true. Well, I don't really know. I don't really know her like that. Or I haven't seen her in years. Or I haven't, you know, whatever, like enough of it to feel like, well, to cause a question of the truth, you know, to really cause a conflict with, with what is just irrefutable, you know, otherwise. And that is what I'm sensing here, that someone may have gleaned some some type of return from it. And it was enough of a return that they decided they would replant, ooh, planting stories or replant some information all over again, maybe start her up again when it, when it died down, maybe because, you know, people don't, stay engaged but so long not even with the juiciest gossip not even with the you know the most popular celebrities it's here today going next week maybe going tomorrow if you're lucky you know so where the effort the the effect might have begun to wear down a bit maybe people forgot maybe people just didn't care people didn't believe whatever it's like who cares i got my own stuff Somebody went back in, maybe multiple times with this pentacle energy, you know, eight pentacles here, maybe went in again and again to reignite this rumor mill, um, maybe even with new information or some new outlook or whatever, maybe the same old, same old over and over again, but whatever it is, because the seven of swords actually does speak of like 
reinvesting over like sticking with it long term so someone was like really committed to their work here <laughs> and all they yielded was a pentacle like all the energy they put in and it really it it didn't the means the ends didn't justify the means yeah here's the the Hierophant card, which is like a judge. And what's that talking about? Next to the truth. So let's see. Wow, with the Queen of Cups. Yeah, because of somebody's pure nature, being loving and honest, and that's what prevailed, you know, in the court of law, perhaps, or amongst, could even be a boss. You know, we're an establishment back to the energy of it being a, about a position or a business again, where the information may be trickled down or or trickled up, whatever it whatever it may the case may be, but it got to someone that had um, some authority in their decision making, some real influence and power, and they may have examined the. Um, the evidence or the claim, so to speak. I feel some energy on that. This could even be some type of damn um, case. It could even be the result of the defamation itself filtering through the, the justice system to be rectified legally and the judge looking at all because uh, it could have uh, kept someone from achieving in some way or advancing or um, prospering maybe even could have reflected against someone's business or against their character in a, in a way that uh, impaired their business or impair, again, impaired them from from um, advancing or promotion in some type of way. The Hierophant can also represent marriage. So back to that Two of Cups, lover's energy. So it could have kept someone from unifying in a relationship. Either way, I'm feeling with the Hierophant at least now, especially with the Queen of Cups, is someone that, I wanna say is someone that's in the upright, next to the Ace of Swords, that would be honorable, um, that would be committed to the truth, you know, like almost bound to it by oath, in such a way that no matter how tantalizing a lie might be, or um, an illusion, how, how uh, convincing an illusion might be, their top priority would be to get to the core of the truth and to expose every aspect of it. So if this is a boss or a head of some type of company establishment, they would want to get to the core of, well, who is this person that I'm hearing about? Or who is this? Why is this person being... Um, disqualified for this position or why is there so much negative energy around this consideration of this candidate or whatever like they would want to get to the real maybe even have a conversation themselves with the person or you know do their own investigation to find out like the true nature of whatever the target or subject matter might be. Could even be somebody that's in the market for a serious commitment and had their eye on uh, an object of affection. And instead of them taking the word for someone that clearly isn't, you know, for face at face value all that credible, you, at least to the Hierophant in this case, they'd rather see for themselves. Like, well, I'll, 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 I like to see it. Maybe I'll take her out on a date or I'll ask her out or I'll chit chat on the phone or whatever, go for coffee or whatever, and I'll see how I feel, you know, what I perceive of her character before I let somebody else tell me, you know? So in any way that this narrative was 
was um, was uh, diluted or tainted. <clears throat> someone at least someone is willing to subscribe for truth and truth alone and not just what you know what may be here say hmm there's something legal about this because i keep saying all this legal jargon <laughs> with the ace of truth at that let's see what else we got what's on the other side of this sword hmm yeah, this could even be a past lover, like I said, or somebody from the past that, you know, props themselves up to be a credible source simply on account of relationship, you know, or acquaintanceship. Having known someone at a time or for a time or in a certain intimate capacity. So they could more or less have manipulated that leverage to project themselves as someone that would know best or be, you know, again, be credible, be, be truthful about their experience. But what's on the bottom? Yeah, but they imbalanced as hell, two of pentacles. Mm-hmm. Wishy-washy as hell. Probably wouldn't even really know know the truth if... I mean, I'm saying this in one side of my mouth. They may not know the truth if it hit them over the head. But it actually gives that somebody that knows the truth very well. But they just wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't speak it if their life depended on it. <laughs> Like they find way too much value in lies and fabrications than in, in truth because probably because the truth of the matter, whatever it is, maybe even down to whatever this relationship was or connection was, would actually be revealing of their true character. If they were to really tell the truth about how they know this person, why they know this person, and even more importantly, why there may be a disconnection now from what it was before. Because that's what I'm getting here. Like this, this is energy that was past. It's not, it's not really current. It's someone that could have enough of a connection to you to still kind of do damage. Like an a, a old friend, a mutual friend, an ex, a family member, or even a foe, like straight up. Clearly, at the core of it, a foe but they aren't really, this isn't a present connection because somebody's not on the frequency that would match an empress to be connected with or connected to. And maybe that's their issue, that they're feeling a bit inadequate. Um, you know, their own ego and pride is challenged as to their own qualifications, their own worth and value. And so instead of, again, investing all that energy into raising their own frequency, they decide to diminish someone else's. So like I said, they know the truth very well, but it doesn't benefit them to tell it. They, they like spinning narratives about the past that that either aren't relevant anymore or that shoot may not even be true at all but have a, a enough of a hint of of believ believability to again cause a conflict and certainty to cause confusion to cause question but that's really it. It's like somebody that you knew from high school or college. And the only true thing that can be proven is the fact that you indeed did go to school with this person. You did hang out with this person. There was a friendship, a kinship, a, a relationship there that can be proven. 
but the things that they are saying about that time of which nobody could really prove unless you were there, right? Because they, they pick and choose who they speak to about it. You can only you couldn't really prove that it was true or false, but you could definitely affirm that the relationship exists, the connection existed. And then you might even consider, well, if knowing what you know of that connection and that relationship, why would this person lie? Like if this is an old friend, like you could be the third party that somebody's speaking to about another person. And it's like, well, they were really good friends. I know that. So why would he lie? Or he would know or she would know, you know, this information because they were so tight. But that's really the only leg that the story stands on is the, the connection itself. And somebody knows that, which is why it's so shaky, and monopolizes on it to the to the fullest extent that they possibly can. Again, not even all too concerned about how how um convincing their case is. Case again, like what the freak? how convincing their case is just as long as it causes enough question to maybe kind of like stall progression or keep somebody in confusion enough that they would be they wouldn't be sure of their idea about this person their choosing of this person about awarding someone any advancement or or um or uh promotion offer what a proposal like as long as there is a, a seed of uncertainty that would be good enough for someone what they didn't anticipate though was that that seed of uncertainty they meant to plant in somebody else's garden is actually growing as um, seeds of deception in their own, where it's, it's overgrown now. It's blossoming at such a rate where people are just seeing somebody for the deceiver that they are, the liar that they are, the manipulator that they are. Like they, they can't, they, yeah, okay, here's the garden that somebody would want to tarnish. Somebody over here minding their business, probably so disconnected from the rumor mill itself or the even the outside world in general that they have no idea what's being said about them. They probably don't even really care either. <laughs> they are like completely focused on, again, growing their own garden. And like I said, this is somebody that wanted to come and project seeds of weeds into this space so that it doesn't look so pretty. It doesn't look so inviting, so peaceful, so calm, so stable. Yeah, it's like all of what the Empress projects in her highest frequency, like somebody would spin a narrative to say the opposite, like, oh, that's just, that's just her facade or that's just her front, like really, I know X, Y, and Z, or really she, you know, is insecure, or really she's unstable, or really she is um, mean and and nasty, you know, really she is promiscuous, you know, like all this type of stuff that somebody just, that's wild, <laughs> but don't matter. Once again, somebody moving on regardless. And this is the gotcha, gotcha, that this makes sense as to why the, the, it backfired in such a great way. Because this is somebody minding their business. The rumor mill, the gossip, the, the defamation that someone meant to inflict actually ultimately became someone's audience. So it's like them going around doing their due diligence, going above and beyond, as a matter of fact, to, to project 
you know, there was another word. There's defamation. Oh, to slander. You know, I think one is one is written and one. Yeah, more slander. I think is when it's not written. I think um, it was one or the other. But I think slander is more verbal talk. So to slander somebody's reputation. To go around telling people all these crazy stories or whatever actually drew more attention because this is recognition here kind of putting somebody in the spotlight that didn't even want to be or wasn't intended to be you know so they kind of promoted someone to the public eye because like i said all this talk and all this chatter would make people curious enough anybody that kind of cares a little bit to do their own research or to come be a witness for themselves. Like, oh, so-and-so said that so-and-so dot, dot, dot. Let me go see. And then lo and behold, when they come to check you out, this is how you looking. Nine of Pentacles. And it's such a, a beauty to behold that it actually captivates the audience and gains, more, gains you more support, more um, gains more intrigue, makes you more of a spectacle than you would have been when left to your own devices of just minding your own business. <laughs> so that's probably why when I said somebody went back in for another round and another round, it's because every time they tried their best work to make somebody look their worst, it backfired in a way that kind of looked bad on them to some degree and then made people watch either if it was to kind of speculate to see if it would, you know, unveil itself to be true or to just, you know, to just see what it was. And then once you start watching, you can't not watch, you know, like it's, it's, it's captivating. And then so somebody's response to that was to then to go back in for another dose and try to talk, no, nah, no, nah, but, but you, what you seeing, that ain't really what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is, you know child and on and on and on because each time they did it the more it's like the more your garden grows pretty much which eat with each seed that they thought they were planting as weeds somehow got transmuted to be beautiful flowers oh <laughs> why am i doing it wow all because they want to be the damn emperor that's what it came down to. They want to be the one in charge. They want to be the hot shot. They want to be, after all, they are the emperor. Shouldn't they be? Shouldn't they be entitled to all this recognition and rewards and accolades and fortune and favor? Fame, perhaps? Look at me, look at me. I'm the one you want to see type of energy. Bars. <laughs> yeah, with, and, the, and the prosperity that comes along with that, which is probably what's most objectified, if we're honest, which I said in the beginning, right? That somebody, there's some payoff that somebody wants, but it could even just be the clout, you know? It could be the clout itself that, trans translates into profit for someone and it's like the empress just does it naturally it's effortless there's not i mean literally the difference between the empress and the emperor is like reception and and almost passive um passive passion let's say the emperor is the opposite he he is expected to be proactive and aggressive and to even have to work. So it could even just be somebody, you know, really just jealous of somebody's natural favor, you know, like why should they have it so easy? Why, when they feel like they have to work harder for the same results? Or in this case, maybe not, this, this somebody worked really hard and they're just now at the bottom of this pyramid getting to the emperor. So there's definitely some envy and jealousy here as to <clears throat> the balance of work and rewards where some, maybe somebody just, I mean, I don't know. 
it's, it feels like some type of resentment toward women. Like it's, it's like a masculine energy that would want to reap all the benefits of the feminine force. But to, how can I say this? It's like they would be a woman if they could, except they like the dominance of being a man and what that more or less affords you in the society that we live in. You know, like to, to be the dominant figure, to be the, um, you know, the king of the castle, the head of the household, the one who objectively can pretty much, you know, have the um that has like an innate um what do you call it uh entitlement to power and authority and influence yeah but this is somebody that would rather have all of that benefit but at the price that the empress pays which in their eyes mind you is hardly nothing which is why they um don't have much respect for the empress because they feel like the empress energy doesn't have to work hard but she's just given all of this this fortune and all of this favor like a woman is just catered to and doted on for no reason just simply because of her and her her um what sexuality is that the word <laughs> like her anatomical origins or whatever you know what I mean like simply because she's a woman and as a man I can't do this I can't just have the expectation to be protected and to be provided for and that when the reality is is that the empress stands on um on an expectation of responsibility and accountability all her own that looks much different than the masculine energy. You it, Really, if you really wanted to switch shoes for real, for real, you probably wouldn't last a week. Don't let it happen to be that week that, you know, Aunt Flo was in town, if you know what I mean. You, you... You'd give it, you cash it all in <laughs> at the first feeling of a cramp. Are you kidding me? So it's like somebody that just doesn't appreciate nature. You know, they don't appreciate their own. They don't appreciate the opposite sex. They don't appreciate the divine and what has been ordained to be. You know, like somebody ridiculous, pretty much. <laughs> like this no other way they want to be the boss but talking about qualifications they don't have a clue yeah like they want to be the star but they don't have a clue they don't have a clue because to be the star you have to first be sure of who you are and what you have to offer truly not talking about like celebrity status which you know, is comes a dime a dozen in the right viral moment these days. I'm talking about real star quality where you know how precious you are, where you're working in your lane, in the vein of what you've been ordained to create, where you sit, you do invest all of your energy into things that matter, into things that you're good at, or even into learning things that would enhance you. But either way, it's in alignment with your highest frequency, your your most supreme identity, or what you aspire of it to be. Not look, she ain't looking at nobody else. She ain't looking at nobody else. The Empress is looking straight ahead. This emperor, I always see him kind of side-eyeing. Like, I'm not going to pick it up, but I always see his eyes looking kind of shifty to the side. And in this case, it makes total sense because he's so fixated on maintaining that position of authority and influence and power that he forgot to actually earn it. 
you know like he he thought somehow he feels like it's just ready made for him in this frequency now i'm not i'm not talking about a real emperor like one that deserves to sit on the throne i'm talking about this guy that just thinks they are entitled to it maybe because of what they got between their legs yeah until this is what they want to have control over some estate here we go again control over some inheritance control oh so this is like a patriarch and this definitely could be something legal this is some type of patriarchal figure that could feel like they should be sitting at the top of the pyramid how dare they be at the bottom with the minions and the peons, where the women should be, mind you. You see all the, you know? Uh, this is where he thinks the women are best suited and he should be sitting in that high seat. Just because he may in his mind, and I'm speaking this, I'm speaking specifically, this could be generally, you know, the energy of the patriarch versus the matriarch, but it could be very personal as well. In his mind, he has established some authority as to what he's entitled to, his skill sets, his leadership qualities, maybe even what he's been able to acquire materially that somehow to him measures power. But in spirit, maybe even intellectually, quite honestly, given the difference between that Ace of Swords, which did make it to the board, and that page, they really have overestimated themselves simply because they never really invested the work into really cultivating the ideal that they have assumed of themselves. They just assumed it, maybe even have been given it in, in many ways because again of their sexual orientation. But this is this level of favor and fortune is by appointment. This has to be um, appointed. It has to be ha passed down. It has to be assigned. It's not you don't just walk in and lay claim to something just simply because of your previous connection. Is your name on it? Did the the energy that you know the um benefactor that is passing this down see fit to leave it to you if not you don't you don't have claim to it did the boss see fit to um to name you as a prime candidate or give you the position If not, you you got to go get some more experience or some more education or some more um, training or whatever it is that you may be short of. Or maybe that's not the, the place for you. Maybe it's not the position for you, the role for you. Like you can't you can't take that out on someone that has been proven to fit the qualifications that's been chosen for the role like you. <laughs> This is absurd. That's been the chosen beneficiary. Legally, spiritually, energetically, whatever we're talking about here, this is somebody that really is trying to take liberty over something that's already been assigned to someone else. And they don't like it. And they can't accept it. They've done all that they could to try to, um, to refute it maybe even in a court of law, maybe even in the court of man, or what is it called? Is that right? Like social court or whatever. <laughs> what is that term? The court of law and the court of popular opinion, something like that. There's some term that I'm trying to find, but you get me with all the rumors and the, and the narratives and fabrications and lies and uh, this could even be a father. 
<laughs> wow. Or a husband, an ex-husband, an ex-lover, an ex-boss, maybe from another job that could be tarnishing your reputation in, in, a, in an industry where you could advance and maybe like, you know, blackballing you or something, telling people, oh, she was terrible at my company, or, you know, just because they mad, you moving on, you're advancing, you know, like, wow. But the moral of the story here, let's just not sideswipe it, is that real stars are advancing at an accelerated rate, at a super natural rate now. It, that this level of raw original talent cannot be contained it can't be duplicated it can't be tarnished it can't be suppressed depressed destroyed you know it's just it's it's ethereal energy and we know the law of energy, it can't be destroyed. It can be transmuted, it can be transferred, but it cannot be destroyed even with the best um, efforts to do so. So, you know, which depending on what side of this spectrum you fall on, take the message as it resonates. If you're on the side of trying to stop somebody else's shine, you might as well just quit while you're so far behind bars. <laughs> and if you're in the space of shining unapologetically, no matter what's said about you, no matter what the criticism, the judgment, um, knowing that you're in alignment on your destined path, you're doing what is in the integrity of your convictions, then just keep going. Keep doing it. Because nothing can stop you now. You've already encountered the worst, it seems. Because words do matter and they can hurt. And in some ways, and to a great degree, they may have hurt. They may have done some damage, but not enough to keep you from, from advancing victoriously at that. So there's that. What's on the bottom? Yeah. Wow. Not enough to keep you from advancing victoriously. So this says to me that there was some some injury incurred from efforts to destroy you. Whether it was passive, actively aggressive, whatever it was, it it it, it took a toll. It made an impact. But you bounced back, you kept going. Your will was the reason that you are the empress and maybe the emperor in the highest frequency is because your will was strengthened throughout the entire experience. You came in with a strong will, a strong head on your shoulders, clearly, but it was only made even more, it was empowered even more through the resistance that you incurred. You could have gone the other way, as I've said before, into that lower frequency, which is why the devil popped up because you could have been dragged into that pit of hell to feel like you got to prove yourself or fight against the current or, you know, rage against adversity or prove your point and protect your, your reputation and show you're going to show them. And <laughs> like you just stayed in your garden where you had control over what matters and that was yourself. And that was the safest place to be that ultimately solidified the success rate and trajectory that you're already on, if not soon to be. So what's next? <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, and I'm done. Congratulations. And it all pays off. It's already paying off in dividends. More because you know the value of you. And sometimes the these adverse experiences are exactly for that benefit to teach us how powerful, how resilient, how prosperous, how creative, um, how amazing we are to test our resolve against the resistance so that 
when it when it truly does matter now that we're released into our fullest creative capacity there's nothing that could hold you back there's nothing that you could be told about yourself or for that could be told about you that would impair your path to destiny you've heard it all you've seen it all you've felt it all you you've experienced it all at this point there's not there's really no shock value if anything it's just continued to point you right back inward into this direction here to know like i must matter a great deal if if there's all this fuss about me it just if anything affirms your your preciousness otherwise who would even fix their lips to speak ill of someone that was of no threat to them whatsoever or that they didn't believe was? And so this also speaks that if this is some type of legal situation, there's going to be advancement and, and closure brought to that. If there's something that that is to be passed down, it's, it's coming back into your hands where it's supposed to be or making its way into your possession where it was meant to be, you know, um, opportunity, money, advancement, just even reclaiming your pure identity, you know, like almost being vindicated for the injustices that have occurred whether they were seen or unseen, known or unknown. You are being restored in this moment. And it's happening at an, at an accelerated late rate, which is why with the best efforts to reactivate the rumor mill all over again, adverse energy cannot keep up with the divine. It's two different frequencies. It's already behind just for the intention to be destructive. So keep doing your thing and congrats on all the success and lead way that you've tracked so far. It's why you are in the line of favor and fortune as you are today and why no one will be able to take it away from you as long as you stay committed to that truth. All right. So again, thank you. Um, I'll probably see you again a little bit later, much later. But thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.